Okay, the next item of business is a member's debate on motion 1177 in the name of Craig Hoy on Eddington Hospital. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Uh, I would, as ever, ask members who wish to participate to uh, press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible or place an R in the chat function. And I call on Craig Hoy to open the debate for around seven minutes, Mr Hoy. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Local health services are a vital part of local communities. And that's why it's an honour to, uh, to be able to open this debate uh, today, because the Eddington Hospital is at the heart of North Berwick, one of the communities I am proud to represent. But the Cottage Hospital's inpatient beds and its minor injuries clinic are currently closed. Deputy Presiding Officer, from the outset, I want to stress that I understand the pressures that our NHS is under. But in fairness, we need to understand that these pressures are not new and that not all of them are COVID-related. Healthcare staff across NHS Lothian and the East Lothian Health and Social, uh, Social Care Partnership are dedicated, but they are overstretched. They want to do the right thing by patients, and I want to thank them for everything that they do. Across Scotland, there is no one-size-fits-all solution to local healthcare provision. The Eddington Hospital is a well-used, well-loved service at the heart of our community. For over 100 years, it has served the people of North Berwick and East Lothian, the hospital, constructed thanks to a bequest by Ms Elizabeth Eddington, is operated by NHS Lothian and supported by the Friends of the Eddington Hospital. And prior to COVID and its closure, the hospital had nine beds and provided medical care for a range of chronic conditions, mobility problems, respite and end-of-life care. The hospital was staffed by 10 nursing staff, eight clinical support staff and four domestic staff. Fundamentally, Deputy Presiding Officer, the voice of patients has to be heard even during a pandemic. But with no local consultation, on September the 1st this year, NHS Lothian announced the closure of the Eddington due to staffing constraints at other facilities. And only last week, it was announced that those services will stay closed for at least another month, with every possibility of its closure being extended further. Six in inpatient beds and the staff who supported them have been temporarily relocated from the Eddington to the East Lothian Community Hospital in Harrington. NHS Lothian says this provides additional nursing capacity and has allowed them to keep 14 beds open at the Community Hospital in Harrington. But this does not tell the whole story. Writing in The Scotsman, local community practice GP Claire Dolden said the Eddington was, and I quote, a mainstay of local patient care. She added, it allowed us to manage patients closer to home without admission to an already stretched hospital sector. After the hospital closed, I took the decision to undertake a community survey to gauge the views of local residents. I secured the views of 1,929 people, and 77% said they had personal experience with the hospital. 97% of those who were surveyed were opposed to the closure. The community voice is clear. They want the hospital services reopened, and I hope that the Minister today will add the Government's voice to this call. The value of the Eddington Hospital cannot be measured by NHS managers or ministers on spreadsheets. The hospital provides... I will give way to Mr Whitfield. Martin Whitfield. I am very grateful to Craig Hall giving way and bringing this very important debate into this chamber today. Would you agree with me that the nuance of the benefit of the Eddington Hospital does not seem to be able to be reflected in any NHS assessments of the value which just bases it on number of beds? Craig Hoy. Precisely, and I think that's uh, exactly why so many local residents have been in touch with, with all members, uh, both from South Scotland and, and East Lothian, in respect of this, because the hospital does provide much-needed, high-quality levels of care. Uh, Jane from North Berwick told me, my mother spent her final days there. She was so well looked after, and as a former nurse, was happy to be there, unlike her stays at the Royal Infirmary or the Western General. And local resident Linda said, I have used the Eddington since my son was small. The Eddington looks after the community from scrapes to scratches through to respite and end-of-life care. It is our beating heart. Deputy Presiding Officer, East Lothian is the second fastest growing area in Scotland. Mid Lothian and West Lothian are growing fast too. Yet health services across the Lothians have not kept pace. Many of the pressures that we see were there before COVID. And had the SNP invested the same levels as the UK Government funding was given to Scotland during Nicola Sturgeon's time as Health Secretary, an additional £1 billion per year would be being spent in our NHS. 
Had the government built sufficient workforce capacity when the sun was shining, the system would not have hit breaking point when the COVID storm hit. In NHS Lothian alone, there are presently 1,011 vacancies for nursing and midwifery and 5,761 across Scotland as a whole. So when the Minister speaks, it would be good if he can say how the Government intends to plug that gap. Deputy Presiding Officer, local GPs are also concerned about the closure of the hospital and also the manner in which it was closed. Dr Andrew Smith is a GP in Gullen with 25 years experience admitting, admitting to and looking after patients in the Eddington. He says, I was not informed directly of, this, of the decision. I contacted the director and received a second-hand apology. Deputy Presiding Officer, the Community Council, the Local Area Partnership and the Friends of the Eddington Hospital say they have been left in the dark. Responses to their freedom of information requests are sketchy, redacted or outstanding. They say that hard data is proving hard to find. So today my principal ask of the Minister is that you encourage NHS Lothian to consult fully and to engage better with our communities. And can you help ensure that data about bed use, uh, the minor injuries clinic numbers and the knock-on effects on other services put, are put into the public domain as quickly as is possible? And will you bring forward, Minister, the date that you plan to meet with local campaigners so that you can hear firsthand their urgent concerns? Minister, the ongoing closure of the minor injuries clinic is also adding to the pressure at a and &E at the Royal Infirmary. The expectation that those injured should be able to make their own way to Edinburgh to receive treatment is unreasonable for many. Furthermore, we were told that moving nurses to a hospital where there were significant pressures would reduce those workforce pressures. But rather than move hospitals, at least one experienced nurse from the Eddington has chosen to leave the NHS. The, the decision to close respite and palliative care has put pressure on other facilities in East Lothian, including hospices. In her Scotsman piece, Dr Dolden said that closing the hospital has been counterproductive. She says there has been a knock-on effect on central patient services and a loss of more personalised services and associated high uh, uh, staff turnover. So whether it's on staffing levels, on pressure on the care sector, on respite services, on palliative care, the closure of the Eddington Hospital is likely to have had a negative impact. And all the while, beds which could be being put to good use lie empty and a minor injuries clinic is closed. Deputy Presiding Officer, there is cross-community, cross-party support for the rapid reopening of the Eddington Hospital. So I hope ministers will listen. I hope they will agree to work with me and parliamentary colleagues to meet urgently with local campaigners and to work to tackle the underlying issues in our NHS so the Eddington is reopened and its future is assured. Th thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr Hoy, could I remind uh, members that the only you in the chamber is the uh, presiding officer and that comments should come through the uh, chair. Um, but with that, can I call Paul McLennan, who will be followed by Martin Whitfield for around four minutes, please, Mr McLennan. Thank you, Deputy President Officer. Can I thank Craig Coy for bringing forward this debate this afternoon? It, four minutes isn't enough to talk around about the, 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 the hospital itself, but I'll, I'll try and cover as many points as I can. First of all, can I thank all the NHS and care staff in East Lothian and, of course, across the country for their efforts now and in the past 21 months. It's been an incredibly difficult time. The Eddington Hospital in North Berwick is an integral part of the psyche of North Berwick. It's been a consistent and lifetime of everyone in the town. There won't be many people, as Craig Coy said, who haven't used the facility, be that the minor injuries clinic, step up or step down care or end of life care for loved ones. The Friends of Eddington Group, led by Murray Duncanson, has been a fantastic support for the hospital over a number of years. When the announcement of the, the temporary closure of the hospital came through, it came as a, as a surprise and as a shock to us all. At, at that time, as a constituency MSP, I pulled together a steering group, which consisted of myself, Craig Coy, Martin Whitfield, all local councillors, Friends of Eddington, North Berwick Community Council, North Berwick Health and Partnership, uh, well Wellbeing Group, local GPs and a local area partnership. And that's worked really, really well. It's a cross-party uh, agency has met fortnightly to discuss options to push for the hospital to be reopened as safe as clinically possible. At, at this time, we have the unprecedented pressures of the new Omicron variant and what's the most challenging moment we have faced in the pandemic. Um, I want to give thanks to all involved who have been quickly, very quickly opened up the drop-in vaccine centre at the Corn Exchange in Harrington. That was incredibly well put together and it's opened up today and I know there has been queues at that uh, already. Uh, of course, 
we all recognise the reasoning behind the temporary closure. The pressures on the NHS are unprecedented. In Edinburgh, the Royal Infirmary and the Western General are under incredible pressures. The East Lothian Community Hospital in Harrington subsequently has seen this pressure passed down the line. Only this week, East Lothian Council communicated, uh, communicated their issues around about social care recruitment and pressures on delivering care packages. And of course, the push for mass vac uh, vaccinations has had a demand for staff. That pool of staff for the NHS, carers and mass vaccination staff is being stretched and is incredibly difficult to balance. And last week, as both Mr Hoy and, and Mr Whitfield were aware of, we were told that delayed discharges in the NHS were around about 400, the vast majority in Edinburgh. The main reason given for the closure, of course, was given the overall staffing pressures in the NHS Lothian estate and that more beds would be available to residents in East Lothian if they were provided at East Lothian Community Hospital rather than Errington. And I think it was mentioned about the 14 at the Community Hospital as against nine at the Errington. But there is that nuanced uh, debate that I think that, that, that has been mentioned by both my colleagues in, in regarding what, what are the other things that are impacting on there. And it is the pressures on hospices and pressures on the empty care beds, for example, in East Lothian as well, that could be used, and I think that it takes that more detailed look to, 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 to do that. We were also told of recruitment issues for the community hospital in Harrington, which leads me to an ask of the Cabinet Secretary. The Friends of Harrington, as well as local MSPs, have asked for staffing figures, staff shortages and criteria for reopening the hospital in terms of the staff, establish, uh, the staff establishment. We have all been told that this information is only available through FOI. This needs to be shared and needs to be transparent and openly shared within the group. This is key and fundamental. Um, and it's one of the key asks we've had from the steering group, which met only last night. The steering, uh, steering group has also asked for information on the impact of the closure of the minor injuries clinic, and, and, and has that presented additional pressures on A&E facilities in Edinburgh? Again, we were told we need to submit an FOI request. And we heard from Claire Dalden, who, as I said, has mentioned around about the pressures on local GPs. And again, I think that needs to be taken into the debate and discussed. At a recent meeting of MSPs and M MPs, the Eddington Hospital was discussed. We managed to secure reviews that would be monthly instead of quarterly, and then NHS Lothian Chief Executive Callum Campbell would meet the steering group in the new year to explain the clinical reasoning of the temporary closure and answer any questions. But, any officer, in the short time we all have in this debate, I want to conclude with another ask of the Cabinet Secretary. Can he give the people of North Berwick the reassurance there are no plans to close Eddington on a permanent basis? Eddington has provided care for many in North Berwick and East Lothian over many years hope we can see it open as soon as clinically safe. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr McLennan. And I call Martin Whitfield to be followed by Sue Weber. Four minutes, Mr Whitfield. I'm very grateful, Deputy Presiding Officer. <clears throat> and I'm in the unique position, I think, of agreeing with all of the statements from across this chamber that have already been said. And I think that speaks to the heart of what the community feel the crisis over the Eddington has been, but also speaks to a way of resolving this. The Eddington Hospital is sat at the heart of every living person in North Berwick, having been opened in 1913, um, becoming part of the NHS in 1948, described then as a cottage hospital. A small hospital where people who were in crisis, had a panic, were sent by their GP, could attend to get any service, from potentially getting a splinter out of their finger all the way through to dealing with a broken leg. And it is in that versatility that the value of the Eddington Hospital has wormed its way into the love of the community. A love that's shown by the thousands that have signed the petition. The love that's shown by the hundreds that turned up on a quite cold Sunday to make a heart in the park for their Eddington. To those people who will gather, hopefully COVID permitting, to celebrate a Christmas carols over the Eddington. And I say this not because it's a community that is a hospital that they just love and don't need. The Eddington, Eddington is a hospital that they need, and it serves a myriad of purposes. From, as we've heard, the nine beds, that when it was moved was six beds but had nine beds in it, but also the minor injuries unit, a hospital that both of those facilities were provided by the same staff. Those facilities that allowed people to avoid having to take a train or buses to the nearest hospital that could deal with them, or indeed stand outside of their pharmacy to try and get help there. It was a location that people could trust. And when they were told at that location they needed to go elsewhere, they took that advice with confidence. The challenge that has occurred over this closure due to COVID is that the way that it has been 
um, announced, the way it has been handled, has flown in the face of the community's experience of their NHS through the Eddington Hospital. They have had to fight to get answers to questions, and even at this time of crisis, that is unacceptable. They have had to fight for people to come and speak to them to explain. Even at this time of crisis, that is unacceptable. Because through this hospital, people are making choices about the way they face the COVID um, disaster that looms in front of us. And they need to have confidence in their NHS. And for them, their NHS is a cottage hospital in part where they can go to with the smallest of complaints or the biggest of complaints with people who live in their community that work at their local hospital. And with all respect, I do not think any of their asks have been unreasonable. There is an economic model at a time of crisis that says you bring all your resources together. But there is another one, that if that hospital was supported, so much pressure would have been taken off the larger hospital units and the other areas that perhaps, perhaps, the way through this COVID crisis could have been a different way. I know that you've heard of the asks from today about the agreement to meet the freedom of information data, which is crucially important because it is their data. It is the data of the people who are asking this. And for them to understand the decisions that are being made, they need to see this and have it explained. I welcome the agreement of NHS Lothian to meet with the steering group and those people that have petitioned for this. And I welcome the um, Secretary's agreement to meet them, I hope, as soon as possible. So this is an opportunity to say sorry to a community for the way something happened and to start to make roads to make it better. But we need to fill those thousand vacancies across NHS Lothian. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Thank you very much, Mr Whitfield. And I call Sue Webber to be followed by Jackie Bailey. Four minutes, please, Ms Webber. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I believe that local health services are a vital part of local communities. The Eddington Hospital opened in 1913 and has served the people of North Berwick and East Lothian successfully since then, up until now. Prior to COVID and its closure, the hospital had nine beds and provided medical care for a range of chronic conditions, mobility problems, respite and end-of-life care. I wrote to Marie Todd on November the 9th after raising the closure of the Eddington Hospital with her at Health, Social Care and Sports Committee following a visit I had to North Berwick attending the hands around the Eddington rally. In my letter, I voiced concerns about fears the hospital, which provides the palliative care to local residents, will be shut down for good, and asked if she would contact NHS Lothian and reverse the closure of the inpatient palliative care beds at the Eddington Hospital. She replied to say that the East Lothian Health and Social Care Partnership and the IJB are agreeing criteria for the safe reopening of the Eddington Hospital and are ensuring that staff are engaged and informed and also fulfil engagement and consultation with local communities, community groups, staff and elected members. She also said that the Cabinet Secretary, who is here today, will be meeting with the Community Hospital Campaign Group soon to discuss their concerns and future plans for that hospital. As my colleague Craig Hoy has said, I think it is vital that this meeting between Hamza Yosef and the Community Hospital Campaign Group takes place as soon as possible. Sadly, NHS Lothian's Gold Command Group met last week to review the decision to temporarily move staff from Eddington to East Lothian Community Hospital in Haddington. The decision was taken to keep North Berwick's Eddington Hospital closed. Ultimately, this decision centres around workforce pressures. There are simply not enough staff. I have been calling for resilient and robust workforce planning. Not just a plan, but real action to address the long-term issues with our workforce. They have long predated COVID. These can be attributed directly to decisions taken by the SNP government from as far back in 2007, when Nicola Sturgeon cut the number of nurse training places when she was Health Minister. There is cross-community support and cross-party support from the, for the rapid reopening of the Eddington, as we have heard across the Chamber this afternoon. 
if the government cared about community hospitals as much as the rest of us, they would have done something about it. There was, after all, no consultation, nothing. And everything we have faced over the last 18 months, it should be clear that if we had more services in communities, we could have and would have managed things better. To decide now to close a community service makes no sense. We need to have more services in the heart of our communities. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Thank you, Ms Webber. I now call Jackie Bailey to be followed by Carol Mochan. Four minutes, Ms Bailey. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Can I congratulate Craig Coy on securing the debate and indeed to all the speakers so far um, for the content of their speeches. I was very pleased to join members of the Eddington Hospital campaign in North Berwick to hear firsthand how much they love and value their local hospital. Eddington is, as we've heard, more than 100 years old. It's been serving the community of North Berwick and its many visitors, of which I have been one, year after year. The community hospital offers a range of services, whether it's palliative care, whether it's out of hours, but the critical thing for me, it's supported by GPs, allied health professionals and nurses, and it provides much valued and safe local health care. I am a complete fan of local services. I make no secret of that, but especially so when it is a well-run, sustainable service, which the Eddington is. So let's review what happened. We are all, of course, alive to the fact that there is a pandemic, but the decision to transfer services away from the Eddington was apparently based on staff shortages. Let us be perfectly clear, it was staff shortages elsewhere in NHS Lothian and not staff shortages at the Eddington. NHS Lothian took the decision on the 25th of August. They consulted the Scottish Government on the same day. A press release was sent out on the 1st of September, securing the knowledge that agreement had been reached with the Scottish Government. And, you know, it, six beds and staff were transferred away from the Eddington. These were to be temporary changes. There was to be a review after three months. That was promised. So I wrote to the Health Board. I wrote to the Cabinet Secretary. I asked, who's doing the review? Will the local community be involved, as they weren't the first time round? What are the criteria for the review? I had a response from the Health and Social Care Partnership. I've still to receive a response from the Health Board or the Cabinet Secretary. And I have to say, there was nothing there about the current review. It is genuinely appalling that there is so little transparency and that local people and local clinicians are not consulted. And that simply cannot happen again. Information must be shared with the local community and local clinicians. But what was interesting is the Health and Social Care Partnership's response, because they tell me that there is a work programme to review the long-term model and provision around two care homes and the Bellhaven Hospital and Eddington Hospital sites. Well, my goodness me, there is even a change board set up to do this. All I can say to local people in that area is I've seen some of this before in my own area. You need to engage now because every instinct of the NHS board will be to centralise services and there is a real danger that more services will be lost. But the changes already made will have had an impact. Others have described it. But let me just take the minor injuries unit as one example because many people will have ended up going to the front door of A&E needlessly when they could have been seen locally contributing to the crisis at A&E and in our hospitals. But I won't go on, presiding officer. I have three asks of the Cabinet Secretary. Firstly, meet with the campaign group, local people and clinicians to understand how much they value this local provision. Ensure that the Health Board and the Health and Social Care Partnership are transparent and share data without the need for game-playing and FOIs. And please can you today give a long-term commitment to the hospital so that services that are appropriately delivered locally are not centralised and remain in North Berwick. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Bailey. And I now call Carol Mochen, who is the final speaker in the open debate, and who joins us remotely. Four minutes, Ms Mochen. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I also thank Craig Coy for bringing this debate to the Chamber. 
Can I also commend my colleague Martin Whitfield for the work he has done on this issue and for standing so strongly beside the North Berwick community. Deputy Presiding Officer, when a petition gains thousands of signatures from local residents who care deeply about their hospital and their community, it is often a call for health boards and for government to listen. Clearly, these calls have not been listened to, and the views of the public have been ignored with the continued closure of the community ward at Eddington Hospital. I know that the pandemic has put restrictions on the way we have lived our lives, but con consulting with the public is some, something decision makers are still able to do using different types of consultation, using virtual meetings and other platforms. The fact that this decision has been made without any real consultation, as we have heard, with the public should be a concern to us all, and I hope the Cabinet Secretary recognises that this simply should not have happened. Health services are at their best when they are local, when people are familiar with the settings and environment and have a connection to it. Closing a hospital that has provided over 100 years of good care and service to its local community will undoubtedly have adverse impacts on the community it has served for so long. In the aftermath of a pandemic, people will, and the Scottish Government and the Health Board should, recognise the importance of local community care. But its importance is heightened that bit more when the building in which the care is provided has been a stability of the community for so long, where generations have brought, are brought up knowing it and liking many, uh, linking many personal memories to it. It is hospitals such as Eddington that should be doing all we can to protect, not to close. Deputy Presiding Officer, we all understand the severe pressures the NHS is under, and we know that staffing is an issue in some areas, but as we have heard, not at Eddington Hospital. It is incumbent on the Scottish Government to provide the resources to create new posts and to address staff shortages wherever they are, uh, but it is very important that locally people know that their services are valued. The NHS has carried us through this pandemic. It is the very best of our country and our proudest possession. But underfunding and undervaluing of health services by government has led us to a situation where the staff and community care facilities are being moved to centralised health hubs, and this should not always be the case. And, Deputy President Officer, let me be clear: the Scottish government's underfunding and undervaluing of the health service long predates the pandemic. Lessons need to be and should have been learned long before now. The people of North Berwick understandably feel as though a big part of the community has been torn away from them. They are understandably unhappy at the lack of consultation and they are understandably concerned about the future of their local ho hospital. They have not been communicated with. and I hope the Cabinet Sec Secretary can give them some reassurance today that the Scottish Government is doing all it can to secure the future of this hospital and to communicate with the, the public. In concluding, I will reiterate a point I have made throughout this debate, that health services are best when they are de delivered locally, easily accessible and serve local communities. That this local hostel has such a history and connection to the people it serves is an added benefit that should be preserved for as long as possible. Possible. The people of North Berwick deserve first-class local services at their doorstep, and they deserve to be part of the consultation and listened to. Thank you to Craigoy for bringing the debate, and thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Mohan, and I call on the Cabinet Secretary to respond to the debate for around seven minutes. Cabinet Secretary. Thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. <clears throat> After being slightly mean to Craig Hoy yesterday, uh, can I attempt some redemption by uh, thanking him for? <laughs> he says he'll buy me a box of chocolate. That's exactly. Uh, away to the Cabinet Secretary for Health's heart. Um, can, I, can I thank him uh, for securing this debate as an important debate? Um, I, I should say, I mean, if this was a, a parliamentary motion uh, that we were voting for, I would vote for Craig Hoy's motion. I see nothing in it uh, that causes me uh, any, any difficulty. Um, and I think uh, he and uh, all members today uh, spoke well. I didn't necessarily agree with every single word uh, that was said, but I will come uh, to that. But I think they spoke well. And the core themes of each of their debates uh, are, are issues that I wish to pick up on. Uh, but can I say, for what I thought was a really excellent speech by uh, Martin uh, Whitfield, he really got uh, to the heart of why hospitals are so important to our communities, but particularly community hospitals. Um, they are there from, literally, birth, uh, often to death. 
and everything that goes in between. Uh, some of our life's most difficult uh, moments have been surrounded by nurses, uh, by doctors, by those in our hospitals. Uh, they have often and always usually shown great compassion and care. Uh, and again, in a community uh, like North Berwick, a tight-knit community uh, like uh, North Berwick, uh, Eddington Hospital, no doubt, has been a central feature in many of those moments. And of course, they celebrate with us and joy. Uh, there's many moments I won't forget uh, in my life, uh, the top of those being uh, when my uh, daughter was born and I got to hold her for uh, the first time. And again, supported by the doctors, the nurses uh, and the other theatre staff uh, who were there at that time. So uh, I think uh, every member here recognises the importance of Eddington Hospital uh, in the heart of the local community. And I want to reiterate that I understand that. And I know uh, NHS Lothian understand that uh, too. Uh, a few points that uh, other members have raised that I would like to touch upon and reiterate and give some assurance if I can. I think there have been three really key themes, though, uh, if I've missed anything out, of course, members uh, can, can uh, more than welcome to, to intervene uh, on me. But the three key themes uh, that I think that people have been asking for assurance uh, on is consultation, uh, transparency, and then the long-term uh, future of uh, the hospital. O on consultation, can I say, uh, of course, uh, in, in this pandemic in particular, and I think everybody recognises this, uh, we couldn't uh, and we can't expect health boards to do the full level of consultation uh, they necessarily did. Uh, I will address the point that Craig Hoy is, is, is making from a sedentary position uh, shortly. Uh, that is why I emphasise uh, we couldn't do the full consultation or health boards couldn't do the full consultation. I don't think a full eight to 12 week consultation is something that can be done in the midst of a pandemic, uh, given uh, the nature of the rise in cases that we have seen uh, through various different variants at the moment, the Omicron variant. However, uh, members are suggesting uh, that perhaps some consultation could have been done. I think that's a fair ask. It's a fair request. It's a fair uh, issue for the health board to reflect on. Uh, I don't think anybody, even within the community, probably would have expected an extended consultation, but they would have expected uh, some uh, discussion uh, to, to, to be had uh, with them. But also, equally, can I say, uh, having uh, met uh, with uh, NHS, uh, NHS Lothian, uh, both the chief exec and the chair, on a very regular basis, um, I know just how uh, rapidly they have had to make some extremely difficult decisions. But I think the points on consultation are well made. They're not ones I'm going to dispute uh, here. If I look uh, to the present day before I look uh, forward, um, a number of members, Paul uh, McLennan uh, raised this point uh, in particular. Well, he raised it with me uh, when I uh, met with him and he raised the, the issue of uh, Eddington Hospital uh, a number of months ago uh, with me. Um, the issue of transparency and data uh, I think it is, again, not an unreasonable ask for the local community and for their representatives to ask for transparency in the decision-making process. Uh, that's not always as clear as a matrix, and we can use matrix, uh, matrix on, 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 on paper, we can use spreadsheets, we can uh, analyse the numbers, but actually we also have to take into account, as many members have said, the experiences of the local community. Those uh, qualitative experiences can be as important as the quantitative uh, 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 data analysis that we do. Um, so the request that many people uh, have made uh, on me uh, in terms of uh, uh, can NHS Lothian uh, release that data as opposed to it being FOI, I certainly will take that issue up with NHS Lothian. I'd like to understand the reasons why they are taking that approach. Uh, if there are reasons <coughs> in particular uh, that, are, that, that are reasonable. But if they are not, then of course I will uh, I certainly ask NHS Lothian to engage with full transparency, because the last thing we need is for people to mistrust uh, NHS Lothian for the intention of why they're doing what they're doing. I think they have done what they've done for a very uh, good and important reason in the, uh, during this pandemic. And, and, and then the thirdly is the question of the long-term uh, future, which again, uh, uh, a number of members, Paul McLennan, uh, uh, Craig Hoy, of course, uh, Jackie Bailey, uh, and others uh, asked about, and uh, I have uh, said very clearly in written communication uh, that, uh, that uh, there are no plans to permanently close uh, Eddington uh, Hospital. I reiterate that uh, again today. In terms of what services will be available in the long-term future, I hope members will understand at that moment, at this moment, in the midst of the pandemic that we are in, it may be difficult to answer that question. I'm more than happy to give away. Craig Hoy. Just in case he uh, completes his remarks without answering just this one ask that was made, 
He is due to meet with the campaigners at the end of January, which will be after the next uh, review period. I understand he was in East Lothian uh, recently, uh, visiting the community hospital, but didn't inform uh, um, uh, either Mr Whitfield or myself, and, and, and he didn't inform um, Mr McLennan, whose nose was slightly out of joint, I, I, I think. But next time he comes, um, the kettle will be on, the chocolates will be out, and uh, we're very happy to, uh, to, to, to meet with them. But could he uh, please just meet that core ask of the uh, campaign groups, which is to meet them before the next review, so that he can get fully appraised of their concerns? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I'm afraid uh, the current pressures that I am under, dealing with the immediacy of not just the Omicron variant, but the booster campaign, of which, of course, the First Minister took a number of questions today, uh, his colleague, the Leader of the Opposition, uh, highlighted just how important that booster campaign is. These are my immediate priorities. Uh, and therefore, uh, what is in the diary for a meeting uh, early uh, in, in, in the new year, of course, is uh, a date that I will stick to. I hope you would understand, uh, notwithstanding the importance of this issue, and I, I hope I have reassured him and the community how important uh, this issue is, uh, notwithstanding that, uh, I have some immediate pressures, which, of course, uh, I have to fulfil. But I will uh, meet with him in terms of uh, going to, to, to East Lothian, uh, of course, uh, if that was uh, if he and other regional members, and indeed the constituency member, were not informed, uh, I do, of course, uh, apologise and regret uh, that. Um, uh, as I say, I do plan, and I'll conclude in this uh, planning office. I do plan to meet with North Berwick Community Council. I do intend uh, for local members uh, to be there as well, and I hopefully at that point we will have a clearer picture of where we are at. But given uh, the difficulties we're facing with Omicron in particular, I'm not necessarily envisaging uh, that, that much will change. But let us see and uh, let the review do the job it needs to do. Uh, and I uh, conclude by saying I understand the importance of this issue to the local community and look forward to meeting them in the new year. Thank you very much indeed, Cabinet Secretary. That concludes the debate and I suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2.30.